Hey, I'm Brad. Welcome to my studio. In the video that we are presenting uh, today, I wanted to show you some of the processes I go through to make some original materials that I work with in collage and painting. If you use papers and collage in your work like I do a lot, uh, cutting things out of magazines, using newspaper, using maps, using music, that's all, I do it all the time and it's great, but, it, but you can add an even deeper layer of energy and, and organicness to your work by making your own papers to rip up and incorporate into the, the collage as well. So what you're going to see is uh, four different techniques. I'm looking around because we filmed this intro last, so I can kind of show you what we went through. We did some paste papers, which is super fun. You're going to learn how to do that. And um, then I did a tissue paper and charcoal drawing paper. Um, again, you'll see that coming up in the video. We did some mono printing and we did some washi tape and music paper. Those are the four techniques. Uh, there's a few things in the description below. Uh, there's a link to this paper. When we posted it on Facebook, everyone got excited about it and wanted to buy it. So I do have a digital download for that um, on uh, in our Etsy shop. There's a link below. There's also a link to an artist um, on Instagram that inspired some of the that inspired the washi tape work. That's also in the description description below. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. Please do all the things. We're going to try to get as much content in here as quickly as we can to sort of build this up, and then I think we'll roll into one video a week. But that's it for now, so enjoy the making of these papers. All right, we're going to jump in with making some paste paper. Um, this is a very old technique from the 16th century. It was typically uh, paste papers were made for end pages in books. They, um, there's a lot of applications that you could, could do with it. It's made with a wheat paste and some pigment. And uh, I cooked some wheat paste this morning, which looks like terrible uh, lumpy gravy. So I'm gonna try to smooth that out a little bit. We're gonna use some of the wheat paste that I actually cooked, which would be the more traditional way to make this. Um, and then also gonna just make some with wallpaper paste, which is the easy way to do it, and essentially the same thing. If you're going to make wheat paste, you don't want to make very much of it, and uh, you want to be able to, you're going to want to throw away whatever you don't use, because I'm pretty sure in a week or so this would be, if I tried to keep this wet, I would be growing a mold culture. Um, the recipe is pretty simple. I took a quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of water and got it heated up on the stove and then I added seven more quarter cups of water as I was stirring and heating it. So it's nine parts, right? Either nine cups or nine spoons or nine, nine one part flour to eight parts of water. I'm going to put some yellow in there. Probably about one part of uh, paint. I'm just using acrylic paint to maybe three parts of the paste. Um, I really wanted to show you that if you don't have wallpaper paste or you don't want to get wallpaper paste and you want to try doing this, I'll put the recipe in the description below. For time's sake, we're just going to go back to, uh, not go back to, but we're going to go over to the wallpaper paste and just use that. It's not expensive. This one is um, Roman contractor brand universal wallpaper paste. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Let's put some color in those as well. Do uh, let's 
just don't do it that way. Let's do it this way. Let's do a yellow and a green. And let's just get started with how we do this paper. So I'm going to throw some green pigment in there. This is a messy project. I'm at not the biggest work table in the studio, but a big enough space where I can put out some, lay out some newspaper taped to the table and, and uh, have some space to work. Um, grab another knife here. And we'll mix up our homemade wheat paste and yellow paint. And then let's just get started. You can do this on all kinds of paper. I'm going to start on a big, two big pieces of paper here. So I'm going to throw my yellow down first onto one of these. Trying to do this part as quickly as possible because it's not super fun to watch someone scoop wheat paste paint out of a container. All right, I'm just going to spread this all over and I can flatten out some of those lumps too with that. Uh, it's going to be thin. It's not going to, don't think about like painting if you were painting this paper, the kind of coverage you'd be looking for. You're gonna see some white, you're gonna see some things move around. That's actually absolutely fine. One of the nice things about this is that you don't really have to rush because by virtue of putting that paint in the paste, you've made a product that's pretty slow to dry. So we're not in a big, we're not going to be rushed. All right, now, if you were just going to do one color and this was going to be it, with the consistency of this material now within the paste, you can do all kinds of shapes and patterns and things, do you see? I'll show you what I think is one of the easiest ways, though, to get a cool pattern. And that is to marry a couple of pages. So we're going to move the green. Now this is the wallpaper paste. So I'm kind of doing a hybrid situation here. One side wallpaper, one side the homemade wheat paste. Let's get this green on here. I really like using a knife to spread this rather than a brush because uh, I don't really want, I mean, if you put, if you got the brush strokes in there, that could might be interesting, but it just moves so much smoother and nicer with a, with a, a knife and I'm not really wanting those brush strokes in this right now. Um, there's a couple of things you could think about when you're making paste papers as well. They really, uh, all kinds of things you could do. You could use, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm liking the way that this wallpaper paste spreads better than the wheat paste I made. That's one note. Um, you could cut notches into an old credit card or a gift card and scrape. You can use a, a comb. You can do patterns like, like this. Um, let's put these guys together and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use with this one. So I think if you go to any like paint decorator store, art supply places would, would have something similar as well. I had I found these at uh, at Recreative, which is a kind of a recycled. It's kind of like an artist's goodwill. It's all things people have donated 
that are art supplies or could be used to make art. And uh, they're these roller stamps, right? That This one is actually from like a home decorator place. I'm gonna use this one because I haven't used it before and I really wanna see what it looks like. It's got little stars on it. I'm just gonna go over this paper. These two, two that I have pushed together. I pushed, see how I'm pushing some of that paint out? Yeah, this is a, you wanna put paper down for sure to do this. I washed this with a toothbrush to get it clean, which I'll do later. You won't get to watch that part and that's fine. Let me grab a paper towel and try to do a little clean up here just so we don't get too messy because we have a couple other ones we're going to do. All right, now let's pull these guys apart. And if we can zoom in on that, show what those are like. Yeah, I think that's really good. All right, I'm going to set these aside to dry. And I want to try this now. These are like scrapbooking papers. Um, I've got a ton of, of these papers. I, people give them to me. I find, I find them at, at thrift stores. I, find, I mean, you just can't. I have so many of them. I'm going to, let's see, we got purple and there's some purple in there, a little bit of greeny, grapey stuff. Let's do put some more purple into this. Now this pigment is a like a mismatched or a, a mistinted like trial paint from the from the hardware store or from Home Depot whatever. So somebody got a a little test paint wasn't the right color and then they sell it for I think I paid 75 cents for it or something. So that's a great way to get some interesting colors if if there are any that you actually like. Uh, I am going to, I think, just use, I think I'm just gonna use the one color this time. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right on top of this scrapbooking paper. And this time, spread it around here. See, I just, I haven't tried this before actually. This is a, an experiment to see with this pattern behind what we're gonna get. Um, and maybe, I'll just do some squiggly stuff. And I am going to do the merit. I love to put the papers together. I'm going to do that again. You don't have to do that. You can put on paste. You can you can do like uh, these kind of things, and you know, make design. There's all kinds of ways you can do it with just one piece. I'm going to do this again, and we're going to see what happens. And again, I'm just doing one color this time, so I don't know. Maybe I'll. Do that. All right, so it's interesting. These are these are going to be papers that I use uh, for like energy and foundation and collaging and painting and and stuff. So that's kind of a cool that's kind of a cool thing. Um, the one final thing I'm going to do is, you know, I think that's enough on paste papers. I'm going to do something a little bit different now. I'll let those guys dry. I'm going to take this. You know what? I'm going to put a piece of paper down first because I've made a big mess here. These are all going to need to go to the 
sink in a minute. Yeah, my hands are messy. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get messy, so. Alright. I'm gonna take this piece of paper. Oh look, that has a cat drawing on it. Well we'll just leave that. And I'm gonna grab a couple pieces of charcoal, pastel, and maybe a livestock marker. And I'm gonna just make some marks here. Um, the livestock marker, which is what I'm using right now, is an oil-based stick, so you can really get in here and make some dark stuff. Look at those cats. We're just we're not gonna emphasize them, but we won't take them away. Let's make some other marks here. This is a really light charcoal. And I might even bring uh, a little water in here to sort of marry some of that. Okay, so that's it's kind of a drawing, really. I'm going to now throw some Yeah, I put that water on there, so I better blot it off a little bit. Okay. Let's do a quick dusting of hairspray on there. I don't need a super great fixative because that isn't the final layer. I just don't want it to move a whole bunch, so I'm going to need to let that dry. Just a second. Uh, and then I'm going to take, this is actually Mod Podge. I have a love-hate relationship with Mod Podge. It does a lot of things that I like, and it does a lot of things that I don't like. And a lot of times I will go, I would rather go with a, a gel medium, but, or even glue, but I'm going to use it because I got it right here. What I want to do Without the hairspray, this Mod Podge would move this charcoal and, and oil and stuff into a big smudgy mess. But I put the layer of hairspray on so it sticks enough so I can just real quick kind of get a layer on there, okay? And get it to not move or not turn into something totally horrible. I'm gonna put it on here pretty thick and I'll tell you why, because we're not done yet. I'm gonna add one more thing to this paper, and that is some tissue paper. So, let's see, I've got, I have to run over to my cloud real quick and grab some, some tissue paper. I'm going to use a little bit of that, and I'm going to put on maybe some of this. All right. I have a piece of sewing pattern here. That's cool. Let's put that on there. I'm going to throw a piece of this green on there as well. And then I have oh, here is this white paper, which I think is really interesting. It's got a Fun little pattern on there. All right, bring my brush back and go over the top. Really seal all that down. Okay, I'm loving the wrinkles. I love the mark making that happens underneath here. I'm excited to see what gets added onto the top, and once that's dry, it'll actually be kind of clear and translucent. So, there is, this is my world, this is how messy everything is. There's that, there are those, 
And the green and yellow, which, can we get those in there? I'm not gonna put them down. I'm gonna put them back over where they were drying. All right, so that's paste paper and then charcoal and, and crayon marking with tissue paper over the top. Two different techniques for making materials to use in my work. Um, now let's go over and do something else. All right, now we're gonna make some papers um, for use in, in my work by uh, creating some mono prints. This is where I do more serious like art mono prints. I'm not gonna use this today. I'm actually going to bring over that jelly plate. I'm not looking to do extreme detail. I just want to get effect and I want to get paper that, again, you can use in collage and painting and stuff uh, that I make myself, that's original, that I make myself. Don't need a whole lot of paint when you're using the gel plate. I have these little paints that I like to use with this just because I don't need very much to do this and I don't really know where else to use these tiny little paints. So I'm going to put some whatever the turquoise on there and then whatever color this is. I don't need that little dry piece there. Uh, would love it if I had some yellow. I think I have some over here. Yeah, we'll bring this guy back over. This is the yellow we used when we made the paste paper. And then I'm going to take this roller and I'm going to just mix these colors up a little bit. All right. And then get them on there. The jelly plate is cool. Uh, for this kind of work, it's not my favorite for doing like a nice detailed mono print. You're gonna to want to paper over here to just roll off your brayer. And ultimately this becomes a paper that I would use as well. I'm gonna bring a paper in there, press down on that jelly plate, and then I'll take the brayer over the top. And Peel this back and you get something like that. Super fun. There's going to be a little, um, not much residue. We got most of that. We'll take this, try to pull up anything else that's on there. All right. And then let's do, I just got this orange and I think it's really, really pretty. So I want that in there. Orange and really want purple with that orange. I didn't have purple over here. So this, is this purple? No, it's thalo green. Let's do thalo green with the orange. Ooh, <laughs> what happened there? Um, Maybe, let's do something like that, since that happened, right? And maybe, hmm, I wonder if I wanna, that's just a little spray of water. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna tap more than I'm gonna roll just to get those. All right, hmm. Let's put that over, ooh, look how that looks on our, our roll-off paper. Let's bring another piece of paper over. 
lay it down there. So there's tons of things you can do mono printing this way. Now we have got enough. Look at that. We have enough uh, paint on there that maybe I'm going to bring in like some masking. Just little pieces of a popcorn box there. And then let's see, let's do. Ah, if I can get the lid off of this ultramarine blue. Throw him down. And let's roll that out. Now with the with the previous orange and green, that's gonna be more of like a ghost print. We might not get a whole bunch there with that, but let's see what happens. Clean that off. Bring in another piece of paper. I'm gonna do a quick initial pull. Oh, I, you know what? I like it just the way it is. Let's get these off of here. And then let's take our cleanup paper and see if we can pull the rest of this off of here. And I'll help out with a little water. I'm going to do one more thing. Ooh, now look what happened there. I like that water. You know what? Let's do, let's just put some water in there. Let's bring this back and just see what happens when we get it wet like that. Super cool. All right, um, we've got a deli paper here that I'm just gonna... It's also another cleanup paper from some more serious intention printing I did earlier today. All right, this guy needs to go to the sink. I wanna show you one more thing here. Let's pull like maybe one of these first ones we did because it'll be close to dry. I'm gonna take this um, deli paper and let's see what do they actually call it. It's the paper that's that your sandwich is wrapped in at the restaurant so that it doesn't it's not all greasy on your hands. I think we I just call it deli paper. It's sandwich paper, deli paper. I'm gonna grab one of the livestock markers, the green, the oil marker. This one's got a little bit of a crust on it. Maybe. There we go. And I'm gonna just put a decent layer of this oil marker on the deli paper. That's nice. And then grab, you know what, I'm just going to grab a pencil. Yep. And let's bring this one in. And let's, this is still mono printing, right? Let's make some marks. Yeah, I like that. Cool. I think that's really could be exciting on this one. This one's still a little bit wet, but that's okay. We'll get in there. Just put a few, few marks on there, maybe up here. Yeah. All right. So mono printing. There's another method for making some original materials to use in my painting and collage. 
So here's a, a technique for making a, a paper to use in, in my work that I just sort of stumbled on last night. I found this artist, Maria Carluccio. She's on Instagram uh, as Carluccio7. I will actually put her Instagram handle in the description below if you want to check her out. But what was fascinating to me about her work, she's a collage artist and she works, she uses magazine pieces and painted pieces in her work, but she really uses a lot of, if not primarily, uh, washi tape, which that's what um, this, I don't know if you know what washi tapes are. I believe they originated in Japan. They're used a lot in uh, some crafting, scrapbooking stuff. You can get them at, at all the places you would get that stuff, Joann's or Michael's, whatever. They're uh, super easy to work with. Um, they're used a lot for borders and, and things, but she actually tears them up and makes pictures using this as her material, these washi tapes. So last night, I, inspired by seeing her on Instagram, I started putting washi tapes on a paper in little strips. And it started to look like music to me. So I went and asked Frank if we had any music around that he didn't care about. And he had some copies of, or doubles of some uh, Chopin music that he gave me. So I ripped music and put it in the spaces between the washi tape and I came up with, with this. Um, so I'm going to do this again, mostly just working with the tape to show you um, how, how I did that. And uh, it's funny because I posted sort of a teaser or promo for this. Um, look, it's the alphabet. It's not. Once you start working with this and just doing little, here, let's put this in landscape. Um, Check out Maria Carluccio and you'll see some really, some very fine work. It's not work that I would do at all or that I do, um, but it's, I have huge appreciation for it, enough so that I felt like I wanted to play with, I had some washi tapes and I got them out and, and decided I wanted to sort of do what she was doing and see what, where that took me. Um, So anyway, I just started doing this stuff, making little strips of tape on the paper. It's really interesting. You know, there's so many things available to work with and I, there's this stigma with fine artists concerning a lot of these products that are now widely available to everybody and especially if they're attached to something that's considered you know uh, crafty um, for me it all boils down to uh, contrivance right if you I mean if you're doing something really sort of organically and and uh, it's kind of coming out of out of nowhere out of your soul or instead of from a kit or instructions or whatever you know I don't think it matters what you use I think it take advantage of of what's out there and uh, let it sort of just happen for you or Follow some instructions and use it the way that it's intended to be used. There's nothing wrong with that either. It's, but I, I get frustrated with people who stop thinking that something's art just because you used a material that's used in, in some crafting discipline or scrapbooking or, or whatever. I mean, we use materials in art all the time that aren't necessarily intended to be art materials. 
So it's in the, it's not the, it's not the material, it's how you use it. Now that being said, the whole point of this video is to create some original material to use in, in my work. Maybe inspire you to create some original material to use in your work rather than using like the scrapbooking paper or something like that. You know, it's, um, it just adds layers of, of energy. It just makes it a little bit more real and a little bit, and a lot more organic and, and, and the energy is uh, much more honest and powerful. And... All right, so I did actually some more than that, but for the purpose of this video, that's, that's all the tape I'm gonna put on there. I don't have Chopin with me. I've got this. I don't even know what it is. It's the one I used. This, this is the book that I used the tour page out for the Valentine card. Um, so I just wanted to get the feeling of music in between there. Almost use it as tape as well. So I don't, I might have already said this, but it was so funny to me, like I did say it, that I posted this picture of this, uh, this on Facebook and everyone got all excited about it. So it will be available in our Etsy store. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the description as well. So there's, um, you know what? Sometimes when I'm prepared, I have a glue stick. I am not prepared right now with that. So we'll just have to pretend that I'm using a glue stick to glue that down or using some gel medium or I'm not going to get the tacky glue down to do that. Um, one more thing I am going to show you though. So washi tape is kind of expensive and uh, I think that these tapes that I have were all, I got them on clearance or uh, I got a really good sale. I don't know. Anyway, they, um, I don't have a whole bunch of them. They are kind of pricey. One thing, though, that you can do if you don't have washi tape and, uh, no, thank you. My son was trying to help me by handing me some, some adhesive, but we're just going to, we're, we're, we're done with that. You saw how to do it. We just rip it, it like little little strips, little bits and pieces, and and sort of. And again, check out Maria Carluccio, um, Carluccio Seven. Uh, her work is just, it's it's really really nice stuff. Masking tape. I'm gonna reach over here and get something that I can reach. These are uh, Karen Dash uh, watercolor crayons, but you can do this or marker or paint. Um, they're watercolor, so I'm going to use my tongue and my finger. Not good coronavirus times practice to be licking the art, but um, that's what I'm doing. Let's bring this back over here and then not washi tape, but you can kind of customize and make make some some tape to use to experiment with in a in a paper like this. And again, once you get it all filled up, oh, there was one more thing that I did. You know what? I put uh, because the music that I, and mostly because the music I used was from a book that where the paper was still pretty white. It wasn't as nice and old as this one. Um, I did pull some coffee grounds out of the coffee machine and just rubbed dry coffee grounds over the top of this to give it, give it that uh, coffee stained look, but I didn't get it wet, right? I just used the dry grounds, which you can do. If you were gonna do coffee or tea staining on this music, you probably would take the paper and coffee or tea stain it first and dry it and then use it in the thing. I'd already glued half of it on here and I'm like, oh, I wish that was coffee stain. So I just, I just rubbed some grounds into it and then dusted it off. Anyway, 
that's our fourth idea for uh, making original papers to use in your collage or painting or um, any kind of decoupage projects uh, and, and, uh, and have it be even more original because you made the materials to make the piece of art.